Nostromo, a commercial towing space vehicle, carrying a refinery with 20 million tons of mineral ore, is en route to Earth with a crew of seven. The canopies open to awaken the crew. Captain? Oh, it's brewing. Ripley. Oh, Ripley, don't forget the cat this time. Parker? They congregate in the mess hall, and they discuss the bonus system. Captain Dallas, played by Tom Skerritt, is called away by Mother, the ship's computer. He enters the Mother console room, as the rest of the crew gets in the cockpit of the ship to determine their location. They quickly deduce that they are nowhere near home yet. Navigator Lambert, played by Veronica Cartwright, finds out that they are at Zeta-2 Reticuli, an outlying system. Dallas briefs the crew, the ship is not even halfway home, and has altered its course because it has picked up an unknown signal, which repeats every 12 seconds. The crew has been awoken from hypersleep to investigate. Chief Engineer Parker played by Yafet Kato protests, arguing that they're not a rescue team, but Science Officer Ash played by Ian Holm, stipulates that per company contract, the crew is obliged to investigate any signal from an intelligence source. The crew assembles in the cockpit to listen to the signal. Can we all hear that, Lambert? Thank <laughs> you. 
Five All right, I found the quadrant. Ascension, six minutes, 20 seconds. Declination, 39 degrees, two seconds. Okay, put that on the screen for me. All right, well, that's it. It's a planetoid. 1,200 kilometers. It's tiny. I need rotation. About two hours. What about gravity? 0.86. You can walk on it. The Nostromo approaches the planet, ship separates from the refinery, and sets course to the planet's surface. It descends toward the planet, but the landing causes damage that will take some time for Parker and engineering technician Brett played by Harry Dean Stanton to repair. Dallas and executive officer Kane played by John Hurt decide to investigate on foot. A reluctant Lambert is ordered to join. Ash takes place behind an outer window with a communication console. Outside, the team walks between the rocks, through the planetoid's inhabitable atmosphere. Inside the ship, Ash tells Warren Officer Ripley played by Sigourney Weaver, that Mother has not yet deciphered the signal, she starts working on the strange signal. Outside, near the horizon, teams see a derelict spacecraft of unknown origin. It is lying against the rocks, vaguely shaped like a horseshoe. Two 
I can't see the end. Oh, that looks like a line. Well, I think we should try it. Right. We've got this far, we must go on. I think we must go on. Inside, they find hallways with walls textured like bones. At the end is an elevated platform. It carries the remains of an enormous alien creature in a large chair, now fossilized. Upon initial examination, there is evidence of some unknown trauma to its chest, its ribs are bent outward, as if it exploded from the inside. Kane then draws the other's attention to a large hole in the floor. Huh? Bottomless pit. I think we should go down it, yes? Well, this is your big chance. Huh? Well, I'm willing. Be my guest. Meanwhile, analysis of the unidentified transmission suggests that it is not an SOS, but a warning. Ripley wants to go after the search party, but Ash talks her out of it. Kane is lowered into the hole by means of a winch. Uh, Kane, listen. Don't unhook yourself under any circumstances and be out of there ten minutes. You got that? Yes, Carla. All right, come on. Aye, aye, Captain. Be careful. Okay. Here we go. You okay down there? He finds an enormous tube-like chamber down below. He discovering thousands of large eggs. Kane touches one of the eggs, and illuminates the egg from behind with a flashlight and discovers movement inside. The egg has flaps on top which open, revealing its insides. As Kane moves into for a better look, life form inside suddenly attaching itself to Kane's helmet. Ash is looking towards the planet's surface, when he sees Dallas and Lambert carrying Kane back to the Nostromo. They enter the airlock and ask Ripley to let them in. Ripley hesitates, citing quarantine protocol. However, Ash disregards Ripley's decision and lets them in. In the infirmary, Dallas and Ash cut Kane's helmet open, they find that a spider-like creature has attached itself to Kane's face. Despite his mouth being blocked, Kane is breathing normally. Parker, Brett and Lambert observe through a window. Look at that. Jeez. Cool. 
Christ. What is that mean? Hey, how the hell is he breathing? He's still alive or what? I wanted you guys freeze him. How come they don't freeze him? Look what's going on. Man? Ripley joins them, and is angrily slapped by a furious Lambert for not allowing him to re-enter the ship. Even if it's against the law? You're goddamn right! Well, maybe she has a point, you know? Who the hell knows what... Oh, is he? What happened to him? What happened to him? I don't know. He's in that derelict. Look, we were inside and there was nothing around, so he volunteered to go down below. Found these egg things. We lost communication, and next thing we bring him up, and he's got this thing on his face. Ash tries to cut off one of its legs with a scalpel, but a yellowish fluid pours out of the wound and begins to eat through the floor. Out of concern that the acidic fluid will breach the hull, the crew runs several floors downstairs, and find that the stuff's corrosive effect is neutralized after burning through several decks. Dallas orders everyone back to their posts, as Kane is left in his coma to be tended by Ash. Parker and Brett resume their repairs. Did any of the acid get on him? Um, no, it didn't. Stop dripping. Yes. Feel them. Well, there has to be um, some way to get this off hmm? his face. There has to be a way to get it off his face. Yes, well, I don't think we ought to try that again. It didn't work out too well last time. Well, I better get some intravenous feeding going. So far, we don't know how much it's absorbed in the system. You all right? to us and never come to this planet in the first place. Oh, right. Should have landed on this damn ball. I know that. Yeah, you're right. The sooner we get this thing passed up, the sooner we get out of here. Get my own ship. Hope I live to see it. This place gives me the fucking creeps. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You think I've got it? All right, ready? I'm sorry, my friend, you don't have anything. Sure, that was it. Well, it's not, man. Try the next one. What engineering school did you go to? Well, come on, man. Try the next one. Well, try the next one. Is 
happening down there? Oh, shit, man. My Johnson's, what's happening, man? You know that? A lot of work, Beckley. Real hard work. Yeah? You ought to try sometime, baby. Oh, honey, I got the toughest job on this ship. I gotta listen to all your numbers. <laughs> Would you get off my back, please? Oh, you poor baby. I'll get off your back as soon as 12 module is fixed. <laughs> this broad's a bitch, man. <laughs> As Kane's situation remains unchanged, Ash is collecting data on the creature. Ripley then confronts Ash with his decision to let it aboard, ignoring the quarantine law. Dallas is sitting in the Nostromo's escape shuttle, the Narcissus, listening to music, when he is called to the infirmary by Ash, because something has happened to Kane. The creature has detached from Kane's face on its own, and has disappeared. Dallas, Ripley, and Ash search the infirmary, and find it dead. Ripley wants to get rid of it, Ash strongly disagrees, he wants to take it back to Earth for more tests. Dallas shares Ripley's sentiment, but leaves the decision to Ash. Dallas prefers to leave as soon as possible. After a successful takeoff the ship docks with the refinery and cargo in orbit. The Nostromo then resumes its course for Earth. The crew is back in the mess hall, bickering again about what to do with Kane. Dallas decides they will all get back into hypersleep. Lambert has calculated that it will take another 10 months to get back to Earth. Ash suddenly calls Dallas to the infirmary. Kane has awoken, still groggy but seemingly unharmed. The crew decides to have one last meal before they re-enter hypersleep. During the meal, suddenly, Kane begins to choke. Kane starts to groan and convulse violently. Bloodstain suddenly appears on the front of Kane's shirt. A small head bursts through the front of Kane's chest. The creature leaves the table and disappear down a hallway. The crew arranges a funeral for Kane, where his body is jettisoned into space. Mr. Ash, you're the scientific officer. I mean, you've got the goddamn thing on here to study it. 
So you've studied it now. What is it? I mean, how are we going to deal with it? You know? No, Brent, I don't. What? Well, I used him as a host, some kind of incubator, right? Yes. Whatever the hell it is, we got to catch it. we got to get, get it off the ship. That's how I eject it somehow. How precise did you propose to do that? Flush it out, ash, room by room, quarter by quarter. That'll take forever. Now, what do you expect? What are you going to have? Some our kind of alternative? Our supplies are based on us spending a limited amount of time on the hypersleep. You know that. Well, I don't think we're going to go into the freezers with that one running loose. No, I think what I did to Kane's mask, for Christ's sake, would be sitting ducks. What? While we're sitting right here talking, that thing is running around this ship. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm scared. All right, so let's find a way to kill it. When we put on pressure suits and we blow all the air out of the ship, that'll kill it. That is a terrific idea. Well, whose idea was it to let that thing on board in the first place? It wasn't mine. No, come on now, let's get down to the Just a minute! Now, oh, I really hate to point this out, but it might be better off without oxygen. It's lived that way long enough. We have another problem until we find it. We're blind on being sea decks. What? All the screens are out. Great. Well, what do we do when we find it? We trap it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we trap it. I can put together some kind of a strong net, a, a, a cattle frog of some kind, you know? Oh, God. Why don't we listen to Oh, come on. Wait a minute. We got some better idea. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. How long would it take you to do that? Uh, I don't know. An hour? The what, Parker? Well, let's give, give me a minute, huh, please? 20 minutes to an hour. The crew members separate into two teams to capture the small creature. Brett assembles a weapon similar to a cattle prod, while Ash rigs together a tracking device. Picking up a signal, they prepare to catch it in a net, only to be startled by the discovery that it is the crew's cat, Jones. Realizing they might pick up the cat on the tracker again later, Parker sends Brett off to catch Jones. As Brett is searching for Jones, he finds a shed reptile skin on the floor. He eventually catching up with Jones. Brett turns around, and is mesmerized while looking at the creature. opening its mouth, biting Brett in the head. Ripley and Parker hear him and arrive just in time to catch a glimpse of the monster as Brett disappears and blood drips down. Parker and Ripley can only confirm the creature is big and escaped through the air ducts. The crew agree that the alien is using the air shafts to move around, they could drive it from the ducts into an airlock and blow it out into space. Ash suggests the alien may be afraid of fire, as most animals are. Fortunately, there are several flamethrowers on board. 
Dallas volunteers to enter the air shafts. Dallas enters the mother console and tries to get the mother computer to evaluate their procedure to get rid of the alien and changes, but mother simply cannot provide an answers or it cannot compute. The main airlock is prepared by Ripley and Ash for the decompression procedure, while Parker and Lambert position themselves where they can measure movement inside the ducts. The main duct is opened and Dallas enters the network of air shafts with a flamethrower. Lambert suddenly catches another signal going towards him. Dallas ascends a ladder to the lower duct, but the alien signal is lost in the meanwhile. Lambert instructs Dallas to hold position, he finds a puddle of slime on the floor. Dallas is disoriented in the cramped space and starts to panic. Suddenly Lambert picks up the creature's signal, it's moving at higher right speed to right Dallas' here. location. Dallas descends another ladder and turns around, facing the creature, stretching its arms towards him. Parker puts Dallas' flamethrower on the table and say, no blood, no Dallas. Ripley suggests that in absence of a better idea, they should continue with Dallas' plan. Lambert suggests abandoning the ship with the shuttle, Ripley reminds that, the shuttle cannot support four people. Parker also opposes the idea, and wants to kill the creature. Ash, anybody? 
ash, get some oxygen, and get down to the lock quick. Ripley decides to go and try Mother for answers, since she now has access in light of Dallas' absence. Ripley accesses the Mother console, and queries for answers as to why they are unable to neutralize the alien. Mother responds that she cannot clarify, referring to Special Order 937, which is only meant to be read by the science officer. Ripley uses an emergency command override to force Mother to explain what Special Order 937 entails. Mother displays, Nostromo rerouted to new coordinates. Investigate life form. Gather specimen. Priority 1, ensure return of organism for analysis. All other considerations secondary. Crew expendable. Ripley suddenly finds Ash sitting next to her, she leaves the console, summoning Parker and Lambert, but she finds that Ash is preventing her from leaving. She demands that he open the doors and notices a drop of white liquid running down Ash's face. Ripley tries to run away, but Ash suddenly grabs her and throws her against the walls. While she is barely conscious, Ash try to suffocate her. Parker and Lambert arrive, both trying to drag Ash away from Ripley. Parker grabs a fire extinguisher and hits Ash. Ash starts to spitting out white liquid. Parker hit him again with the extinguisher, dislodging Ash's head, revealing Ash is an android. They reconnect his disembodied head to see if he can give them any advice on how to deal with the creature. Ash confirms that his order was to bring back the life form, Ripley asks how they can kill the creature. He tells them simply, you can't, as it is, the perfect organism. Ripley to disconnect him again. The three survivors decide to follow Lambert's earlier suggestion, set the Nostromo to self-destruct and escape in the shuttle. Ripley will prepare the shuttle for launch, while Parker and Lambert go to gather coolant for the shuttle's life support system. Lambert and Parker are in the hold gathering equipment. They start to pressurize the coolant bottles. Ripley ventures out alone, into the hallways of the Nostromo to find Jones the cat. In the storage room, the alien corners Lambert against a wall where she had been filling coolant bottles. Parker charges towards the creature, but the alien grabs him with its claws. The alien kills Parker. Ripley finds the bloody bodies of Lambert and Parker's in a storage room with no sign of the alien. In shock, Ripley dashes towards the emergency room. 
she locates the ship's self-destruct mechanism and quickly completes the entire procedure to activate it. The voice of Mother now announces that the self-destruct mechanism has been activated, and the ship will detonate in 10 minutes. Ripley takes a ladder to the lower deck, where she hears a soft groan. She inspects the hold, and finds a strange organic structure adhering to the walls and machinery. Shocked, she finds Dallas stuck within the adhesive, barely alive. On the opposite wall, she notices a shape which vaguely resembles Brett, he seems to be dissolving, transforming into an object like the egg seen in the derelict ship. Dallas very weakly begs Ripley to kill him. After some hesitation, she grants his dying request, she burns them both with the flamethrower and rushes out of the chamber. Ripley crawls up a ladder, and runs towards the shuttle with Jones in the container. Ripley races back to the self-destruct mechanism and tries to override the procedure, however, she is too late. The Nostromo will explode in five minutes. Ripley runs back to the shuttle loading area, ready to make her best attempt to fight off the alien and get into the lifeboat. The shuttle's engines ignite and the shuttle races away, leaving the Nostromo in the distance. Three massive explosions follow as the Nostromo's engines detonate, destroying the ship. Ripley prepares one of the biobeds for hypersleep, putting Jones in it. As she makes final preparations for the shuttle, a hand suddenly reaches out to her from a wall, the alien lying in an alcove. She flees into a locker with spacesuits inside. Ripley stealthily dons one of the spacesuits. Exiting the locker, she arms herself with a harpoon gun, then straps herself into a chair. Ripley opens the shuttle's airlock door. Everything blasts towards the door. The alien grabs the edges of the doorway. Ripley fires her harpoon, it pierces the alien. The door slams shut jamming the Haprun wire under it. Ripley fires the engines, incinerating the alien, and sending it drifting into space. Before Ripley and Jones enter hypersleep for the journey home, Ripley records a final log entry. She expects to reach the frontier in six weeks, and to be picked up by the network. She signs off as Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo, and gets into hypersleep for the journey back to Earth. Thanks for watching. 
subscribe for more interesting videos and don't forget to press like button and share.